I don't give a damn what they may feel about white people. I hate white people. All of them. Every last iota of a cracker, I hate it. Because we're still in this condition, man. You want to play? We didn't come out here to play with nobody. Samir targets only his people with his black power message. He preaches racial separation and rages against police brutality against blacks. He believes that only revolution can liberate his people and rejects the idea that the election of Barack Obama will usher in real change. Samir will use any opportunity to shout his message, even at a festival celebrating African heritage. We didn't come out here to play today. There's too much serious business going on in the black community to be out here sliding through South Street with white, dirty, cracker whore on our arm, and we call ourselves black men with African garb on. What the hell is wrong with you, black man? You had a doom day with a white girl on your damn arm. We keep begging white people for freedom. No wonder we're not free. Your enemy cannot make you free, fool. You want freedom? You gonna have children and teach them about predators. That's why we created the video Predators in Our Midst, so that our children can look at it and say, wow, we didn't know people would do these things. They can hear from pedophiles. They can see what kind of sick things happen. And now the child is conscious so that they are conscious to try to protect themselves. Two, talk to our children and gain your children's trust and make them comfortable telling you anything. Because if your child will tell you anything and they're conscious of what's happening, then a lot of times, not all the times, but a lot of times they can avoid the, the, the assault because they know what's coming and they tell you, hey, this is why I'm feeling uncomfortable. And then as a parent, you can step in. And then, and then also for brothers, we got to start being organized. Even if we're not an organization, we need to talk and be serious about it. It needs to be a platform that black men have just on a regular basis. Hey, we protect our children. We make sure ain't nobody messing with children. And we, when we deal with brothers that start saying funny stuff about young people, we need to let them know, friend or foe, whoever they may be, hey, that's not something we cool with, and that's not, I'm not down with that. And you know what? Why don't you step over there, Slim? Because if you come in my space with that, there's going to be some problems. We can start changing it overnight. And lastly, consequences. When people are guilty, not when they're accused, when they're guilty of sexually abusing our children, they need to face the most severe consequences so that our people in our community know no matter how old you are, no matter what race you are, no matter what your excuse is, if you put your hands on a black child sexually and violate them, we're coming for you, we will destroy you. That's the message they need to get. America now, the only minority issue is the LBGT agenda. You hear almost nothing about black folk. That was the reason it was deregulated. However, although I don't support homosexuality, I cannot hate or deride the homosexual or the lesbian because being a therapist, I do work with homosexual and lesbians, adults as well as youth. And in my experience, my direct clinical experience, most of the African-American and Latino males that I have worked with, young and old, were all victims. Nine out of every 10, there were a few exceptions, were victims of pedophilia in their early years, normally before 12. And you suggest then that that pedophilia contributed to their lifestyle behavior. Well, not even on. what I suggest. What they say in therapy is I am this way because my first sexual act was with a male. And for whatever reason, Dr. Johnson, it's done something to me that makes me feel that this is the way I'm supposed to be, coming from the client. And of course, there's always different perspectives on the etiology of homosexuality. But why do you never hear that voice? Why do you never hear discussion on the role of early sexual molestation as a trigger for homosexuality? Am I saying every single person who's gay was a victim of childhood molestation? No, I'm not. But why has there been no discussion on the many who have? In my experience, and I've met probably close to 100 gay or lesbian, African-American, Latino brothers and sisters, and guess what? Most of them had that as the etiology. I worked with lesbian girls in the high schools. They'll tell me in a minute, you know why I'm this way? I wasn't born this way, Dr. Johnson. I'm this way because I was sexually molested. I grew up in a house where I saw my mother get beat on by my father. So I have a distrust and almost a hatred towards black men. I'm consciously living with another woman because I'm afraid to live with a black man.
Black power, family, black power, black power. Part in the lateness, we had an emergency we had to really, really deal with. Uh, but we're here. We are here. We are here with the show that I definitely promised you tonight. Thank you for listening. Uh, don't touch your dial. Trust me what I tell you. Do not touch that dial. Leave it right where it is on War on the Horizon Radio. I know uh, we've been talking about the post-traumatic slavery syndrome test. But tonight, family, I felt it was deemed necessary to deal with something that's more, a bit more touching and needs to be handled in our community. I'm talking about pedophiles in our community. I'm talking about those who are sex maniacs on young black boys, girls, infants, uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. We have a lot of victims in this world. It needs to be talked about. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to deal with this situation, family, seriously, mentally inside of me. Because I had the opportunity to learn, sit down with a child molester, and really strive to understand what's going through them through their minds. I know many people have been abused and are afraid to talk about it. I know. Uh, man, this is this is crazy, man. This is crazy. Let's go to the lines. I we, <laughs> I'm really trying to deal here mentally, family, because what we have coming before you is something that's going to be very touching. You are going to hear firsthand from a child molester. What shall we go here? You're going to hear firsthand on what goes on in the homes that we are too afraid to talk about in the black community. We blame the white man, but it is us who follow this kind of behavior. So let us go to the line. Do, do, we, have, do we have our caller? Do you need Yes, we are both, both of our callers alive. All right. We have also our very esteemed comrade right here out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, my big brother, brother Dr. Umar Abdullah Johnson, who will also be giving us his words of advice, wisdom, and expertise. So I called Dr. Umar in because I really needed this brother. I called Dr. Umar in because this situation is detrimental enough for me to call Dr. Umar because we need some help with this thing. So, family, I want you to prepare yourself for what you're about to hear. It is something that's never been done pretty much on any radio show, anywhere, we're going to go to the phone lines right now and have our first guest. We're going to hear directly from a child molester. I'm not going to mention her name for security purposes. I don't want her to mention her name for security purposes. But I want you to fall back and listen and pay attention to what we're dealing with here. All right? Caller. Yes. Are we ready? Yes. All right. How are you? I'm fine. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Now, this is uh, the caretaker of uh, our 
guest number one. We're going to just call her that, guest number one. This is the caretaker of guest number one. Uh, I'm not going to mention her name unless she chooses to, but uh, I thank you, caretaker, for allowing the people to know what's going on and to know, sister, that you care enough to uh, even take your time, to take time out of your life to try to help uh, a child molester. It's, it's, it's a big work. I think we should give this sister a strong black hand for at least doing what she does. She cares enough for our youth to at least give a damn. So let's give uh, Caretaker a strong black hand and welcome her to the Stop Cooning Show. Uh, we just want to get right down to business because we're a little behind schedule. So if we could put uh, guest number one on, Caretaker, are we ready? Yes, guest number one is on. All right. Guest number one, how are you? Fine, how are you? All right, all right, we're good, we're good. So, I want to welcome you to the King Samir Stop Cooning Show, Thank where you. we have, uh, we deal with very, very crucial situations in the black community. So, I, I don't want to be, be, be linger, linger around or dilly-dally through the tulips any longer, all right? We're just going to get right down straight to it, Okay. Ah, uh, man. So, family, get your pens and pads out. We're ready to rock and roll. Question number one for our guests. Uh, are you a child molester? Yes. How did you become a child molester? What happened? I had uh, molester over 10 kids in West Virginia. Okay. What made what happened in your life to make you want to do that to other children? Did it start in the home? Your mom and dad? Was it your grandfather? How, how did it start for you? It started in the home. In your home? Yes. Okay. By your mom and dad? Just your mom? Just your dad? My mom and dad. Mom and dad. All right. Could you... But it started, it started out when I was 12 years old. Okay, because that, that was my next question. So you're ahead of me. All right, we working here. We working. Could you tell us, uh, first of all, you said your mom and dad. All right, now let, let's deal with this. Was your father a black man or a white man? A black man. A black man, and your mother, um, of course, was obviously a black woman. Yes. All right. Give us uh, just a day in your house. What would take place? How would your mom and dad go about uh, violating you in the home? How, how, how did that happen? Give us, give us a detailed description on what would happen to you in the home on a daily basis? Well, I was raped at the age of one years old by my lawful father. And then uh, he didn't worry. It's actually been one time. The age one on us. And then my lawful mm. mother was in there watching him rape me when I, was, when I was one years old. She didn't call the Your police. Biological. Go ahead, go ahead. Mm. He also raped my sisters. All right. Now, mm, I know about your sister. Okay, now here's what we're going to do, okay? <clears throat> we want to keep basically your sister and your brother or whoever. We want to keep everybody else out of this situation for security purposes, Okay. And we just want to talk about you for now. All right? Yes. Okay. Now, oh, man. <clears throat> what, uh, 
what what age were you when you molested your first child? Um, uh, 19. I mean, uh, 12 years old. You were 12 when you started molesting children. Yes. And what age was the first child that you molested? Three months. I'm sorry, did you say three months? Yes. Oh, man. Mm, 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 mm. Three months was the first child you molested. How did how did you molest that child? What what did you do to to the three month old child? I had a pillow mop over John and I took my fingers up and started started grinding on her. I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? Slow down a little bit, okay? Slow down just a little bit. So we want everybody to hear you clearly. All right. Now, now, could you repeat it? Go ahead. I had some about her vagina. The little fingers up the side side of her and start grinding on her. Wow. Oh, man. Mm, 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 mm. Family, this is what we're dealing with in our communities. This is what we are dealing with. (sighs) Ah, man. Okay. I have over 10 kids. You've molested over... Go ahead. And also I've molested some more. But I was there in Beckley with my father and mother. But he was uh, in Hebrew, Virginia. So you molested... The dog. So you molested over 10 children? Yes. Now, let me ask you this question. What do you get out of molesting children? Why not grown people? Why not try to rape grown women or grown men? Why children? What is it about a child that makes you sick enough to want to harm or damage this child? What 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 is it about a child that makes you so sexually aggressive? Because I have sex with my mom. Also, I have raped a dog. This is what we're dealing with, black people. You heard it straight from her own mouth. So, did you just say to us that you have sex with dogs? I um. I was the kids couldn't talk or say nothing. So, okay. So, so you, all right, all right. I see where, where we're at now. Okay. So the fact that you molest children is because they don't fight back or say anything. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm with you. All right? I'm, I'm with you now. So stay with me, okay? What... Give us a, a description on, let's say you was to see a child in the street. What would go through your mind when you see that child? I'm having sex with my wife. You be having sex on your mind? Yes. Okay. Why, why with a child? Are you there? Yes. Okay. Why Why do you like to have sex with a child? That's all I know. Wow. And I know it's wrong. Okay, so <clears throat> when is the last time you've had the urge to have sex with a child? When is the last time you felt like that? Two days ago. Okay, two days ago, what stopped you or did anyone stop you or why, why didn't you uh, the care, the do The caregiver it? helped me. Okay, all right. Is she still helping you? Yes. Now, what has the caregiver done to try to basically get you some help? Because personally, let, let me say this, because personally, 
you need to be put away. Seriously, you, you really should, should not even be on the streets. <laughs> All right, but I'm I'm not a doctor. That's just my humble opinion. I'm just an opinionator right now. I'm not a doctor. But we do have a doctor on the line, and we'll be getting to the doctor very, very shortly. But let me ask you, uh, have you ever kidnapped any children to molest them? Yes. How many children have you kidnapped? Excuse me? How many children have you kidnapped? I kidnapped this little boy. He was 10 years old. I took him to my mother's apartment when I offered him some candy. So I took him to the shop and left with him. They did look How... like I'm sorry, go ahead. What did you say? I took him to the shop and left with him at the age of 10 years old. And I was 19 years old when I did that. Mm. In 2008. Tell me about, I know we talked a little earlier. Let's talk about the school. Do you remember the school? With the little boy and the girl, what happened with that situation? Could you tell us more about that? It wasn't the it wasn't school, it was a church. The church. Okay. Yes. What happened at the church? And uh, the bar shop on the little girl's time part. It starts looking like PP. I had locked him in the bathroom. What happened uh, with that situation? Did you. <sighs> What was going on while this was happening? While you were raping these little boys in the church, where were their parents? What was going on? How did you even, how were you able to even get them into the bathroom by yourself? How, how did you do that? Fall to the bathroom. I'm sorry, did you say follow them to the bathroom? Yes. I was sitting okay. in the bathroom. And you were also, now these were just little boys or little girls too? Both. How old were these little boys and girls? Three years old, five years old, and the other one three years old. Were these children white or black? One, two was black and one was white. Two was black and one was white. Yes. <clears throat> what did the parents do? Did the parents find out? Did the children run through the church screaming, hollering? What happened? How did the parents find out? Or did they find out? Well, um, they were screaming. Were you ever arrested? Did the police ever lock you up? No. Could you tell us why? Because they don't like they don't like nobody. They talk to nobody. I have my baby she's eight weeks old. I'm sorry, say that again. I have my baby when she was eight weeks old. You molested your baby? Yes. When she was eight weeks old, could could you tell us how it is it, it it is possible to molest your own child at eight weeks old? What what did you do? I threw him off of her giant ass, put my fingers up inside of her, and started grinding on her. On your own eight week old child. You put your mouth on her vagina, you put your fingers inside of her, and you started grinding on her. Now, 
don't you realize your weight could have crushed your baby? Yes. So even though you knew this was your child, that that didn't make you feel any different? I'm sorry, I personally have my fist. I'm sorry, I, we can't hear you. Slow down a little bit. I punched her in the head with my fist. You punched her in the head with your fist. Yes. What What would make you do that? I don't know. I I was really wrong for that. Uh, I I would say so. (laughs) You think? (laughs) Yes. Okay, Carla, I want you to hold on, okay? We're going to take a small music break, a one-song music break. Going to let everybody get their self together, and we'll be right back at you. 760-569. Seven six seven six. The call in number, the code is nine four eight six five six. We're gonna take a one song break. Callers, I want you to hold on the line. Do not hang up. Okay? We'll be right black at you. We're black. We're black. We're black. You're live on the King Samir Stop Cooning Show, Warden the Horizon Radio, and tonight's discussion: Black women pedophiles. We're dealing with uh, post-traumatic psychological slavery syndrome. And within that, this is just one of the many, many degrees in our community that some of us simply refuse to handle, deal with, or talk about. But, you know, on the Stop Cooning Show, we go there. We go there. So tonight is basically no holes barred, and I wanted you to hear firsthand, not just coming from me. I wanted you to hear firsthand on what it's like uh, dealing with many degrees of white supremacy, because that's what this is, white supremacy. Black people are not natural pedophiles, family. I I want you to understand this. Black people are not natural pedophiles. God damn it, it comes from the white man. We have been taught to do this devilishment by the devil himself. But I... (laughs) I'm, I'm not going to teach that. I, I'm, I'm, I just wanted to bring this to all of your attention. <sighs> Let's get our, our, our caller, number one, black on. Guess, are you there? Yes. All right, all right. We're back. We're back. So we were talking about, we left off talking about uh, uh, you molesting your own uh, child. Uh, and what, how, how many times have you molested your own baby? A lot, okay. Did it make you feel satisfied? Yes. So let's say, uh, well, I mean, it's, it's obvious uh uh, you don't receive the same satisfaction from someone grown. Let's say, have you ever tried to rape uh, a grown man or a grown woman? Yes. And what happened? I was talking about the front part while he was asleep. While he was asleep? Yes. Okay. Mm. Did they allow you to continue? No. What happened? I 
I said that he tried to rape me. You said that he tried to rape you? Yes. <clears throat> mm, 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 mm. So, how many, how many grown people have you uh, actually tried to rape? Um, the only person I was a white guy. Yeah, the one that was here. Mm, 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 mm. The only that, um, my beloved parents had me uh, prostituted out, and I was, um, had, uh, had it, well, I fell apart with my dad for his crack habits. I was my daddy's, my daddy's money maker. And my mother, she didn't care about me. She knew about it. And then my sister raped me. And then all of that, she would beat me with crutches, shoes, um, what is that, a back scratcher, perched on me. And I was eating all my shoes on her period more than more, one more time. And it was a lot of times that happened in Beckley, Washington, D.C., and his West Virginia, and here. <sighs> mm, 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 mm. Let's go back to the, to, to, to the having sex with the dog thing. I, I got to talk with actually with the dog and suck his thing inside me. And then my sister started it. Not only that, she also had raped kids. It wasn't only just me, it was her too. Did you ever have sex with any family members? The only person I had sex with was um, this one guy that I was seeing with in uh, Beckley. Um, no, her aunt, my sister. Your sister? Yes. Hmm. She uh, poured that on me and made me eat her bloody vagina more than one time. It was a few times, but she did that. Mm, 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 mm. Did you like it? Yes. She did, too. We also had sex with her and the caretaker's back a lot of times in our house. Not only that, uh, while we was having sex, um, I, I, I tried to tell my sister what we were doing. And she just kept beating him for no reason. She got mad at me. I tried to uh, tell the caretaker what happened. And then my sister had raised my husband, started punching me and pulled my hair and called me out my name. And yes, it was wrong. I should have told her a long time ago what we was doing. But I didn't have no help. She didn't want to help me. But the caretaker did. She's the only person that came and got me. She's the only person that helped me out, took me shots and everything. And she's also there for me. And I lied on her, behind her back and in her face. And I stole from her. That's all I wanted some help. So I can better myself. And take care of myself the right way. My bloody friends didn't care about me. They all put me in the street and kept my sister in the house. Not only that, every time I was trying to tell all my sister what we were doing, they just put me out and just put her out too. They all love her, but they don't, they don't love me. They think that my sister is better than me. So do you they think that gives you the right to hurt someone else's child? No. But what I'm saying is that I was put, my father's parents had put me in the streets and kept my sister in their house. I had nowhere to go. My mom put me out. My dad was molesting me. My uncle raped me. I had no help. None. They all kept dogging me. Put me in the streets, didn't care nothing about me. So how does that justify you? So how does that justify you to hurting someone else's child? They don't. So what makes you do it? I was receiving no help. I like it. I'm sorry, did you just say you like it? Yes. So I know it's wrong. 
Okay, so if you know it's wrong, why do you like it? So that this means you like to do wrong. No. Okay, explain to me otherwise. Because I'm not understanding here. I wasn't receiving no help. That's why I'm trying to get some help now. It's wrong because I should have never done it. Okay, but let me ask you this. When I asked you earlier, when is the last time you had the urge to do that? You said two days ago. Yes. So it seems like you still want to do it, but you say that you want help. Yeah. It doesn't. It, it, it doesn't make too much sense to me, honestly. I, I have to be real with you. It's, it's not really making sense to me that you say you want help, but you still want to hurt black people's children. That's all. That's all. No, it's sex. That's all. No, it's. all. It's sex. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, I want to. I want to bring on because I think we pretty much uh, heard enough. I want to bring on. I want you to stay on the line, okay? I don't want you to hang up. Because as you said, you needed help. You touch me all the time. That's all I know. And I can't help it. All right. Well, we're going to try to get you but some you help. Me time. Okay. I have a doctor, a very good friend of mine, on the line. And, I mean, honestly, I... <laughs> Your, your behind need to be put away for a very, very, very long, long, long time. But I'm going to let the doctor make that determination. We have family. Brother Umar Abdullah Johnson on the line. Are you there, brother? Yes, sir. Peace and blessings. Peace, brother Umar. Brother, thank you, thank you, thank you for giving us just a few moments of your time. Uh, what's up, bro? What, <laughs> out of what you hear, what talk to us, black man? Talk to us. Well, my first question would be, what is the age of your guest, number one? And number two, does she still have custody of her own children? And if she doesn't, who at the present time has custody of her children? Okay, hold on one second. Caretaker, are you there? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, do you mind answering the questions for the brother? No, don't mind answering. What's the question? How old is the young lady that he's interviewing, the actual perpetrator of these different crimes? She's 23 years old. She's 23. Her biological children are in whose possession at present? Her biological kids is in West Virginia in the state's custody. Okay, they're in state's custody. So at present, she has no children. No, sir, she don't have a winner, no. Okay, and there's no children in the house where she lives? Yes, there are children in the house where she lives. She never been convicted. I've been trying to get help from day one. My security is tight. I do not sleep at all. I put her uh, by my door at nighttime while I lock her in a room with me at nighttime. Okay. And why don't she go to me? My security is real tight. What are the ages of the children in the house with her? The age of the children is three down to um, two and a half months. How many? Five. Five children from two and a half months to three years no. old. That's what I'm hearing? Three, three um, 18 months, 19 months, and two of the two and a half months. Okay, so there's five children from the age of three and younger, in the house with her? Yes. Okay. I don't believe that that is a safe arrangement uh, because those children are not old enough to report if, in fact, she does attempt to engage them sexually in any manner. I'm wondering uh, whether or not she's registered with the state as a perpetrator of child sex crime. No, sir, she's not convicted at all. Um, when I first met her, 
she said it to me, her baby dad molested her baby. So I continue to help her out. She came to Cold Ohio with that uh, baby molesting her baby. So I could go so everywhere, to pass this church, everything. Then I received a psychological evaluation in the mail, I said like a few weeks when I had her. And it stated that she had molested 10 kids in West Virginia, three inside church. Um, but she um, sleep in the bath with the kids, locked them in the bath, had to kick the door down, and yes, the police was called. No, they did not do anything about her, no counseling, no nothing, no conviction, no um, marked down sex offender, none of that stuff. She never got no help until I got her. So I had her, I had no grandbabies at that time, but now I got them. I do not sleep at all. She be with me 24-7. Everywhere I go, she go. Kids, mamas, or, or kids back-to-back, my, my grandbabies, my daughters is Security tight also under kids. She knows we don't play. I'm going to help her from day one. Uh, took how my how, how long has she been with you? Sorry for interrupting. How long has she been living with you? I had her over three years. I say three and a half years, and I've been reaching out for help. She was about, okay, about 19 or 20 years old? Yes, sir. Okay. What is the state that you're in now? Are they aware that she's living in a house with young children? Are they aware of that? Yes, sir, they're aware, and then again, nothing can be done about because she's never been convicted. I had took her paper down to her counselor. I took her paper down to the police station, everywhere to get some help. I also called us, um, the sheriff. She actually been marked down as a sex offender. I also called where she was, where she come from, why she had been marked down. At the same time, y'all sit on her court paper to fight custody for her babies. At the same time, she got other paper saying she must have kids. So they confused that where she live at. And only help she got is from me. Okay. Currently, what mental health services do she receive? Is she under the supervision of a psychiatrist, psychologist? What services is she getting right now as a 23-year-old? She's not getting them right now because when, when she was getting it, she went down and lied to her uh, counselor and tried to make a little uh, attention going on, saying that I had for sex on her, that I choked her neck, um, that I stabbed her, in her face. She don't see her money. She scared me, but I had her for three and a half years. And the march out of her face happened like two and a half, two and a half years ago, but she always decided to make a statement that so she go out and get sex. That's all she knows what sex has all been drawing her head. She knows right from wrong. She knows wrong for touching the kids, but then again, she still continues trying to do it. Okay. But now my family to security again. It's very tight. You mentioned a psychiatric evaluation. She's been evaluated since she's been with you? Oh, no, she had to everybody with me because I was trying to take her down and she was just acting out. Um, I didn't really know too much about her at that time, but then, then I learned that she is a child molester. I did not know how manipulated she really is, how she liked to plot, and very sneaky. She very what she's doing. She's very smart. She knows it's wrong for touching a kid, but she's still trying to, she tried to do it where I'm at now, but I stopped it from doing it. Like, we go to the store whatever. She tried to sneak and go around the other way, but I'm right behind her and turned her butt right back where I'm at. Okay. <clears throat> it sounds to me that the state for which she came was pretty familiar with what her challenges are. Because she's now living in a different state, it doesn't sound like they really know anything about her or even know she exists as a child sex offender living in a home with children. I'm almost certain they're not aware of that because Child Protective Services would take, and we don't want this to happen, but we do need her out of that house. Somebody has to go. As a psychologist, I cannot be comfortable with that young lady being in the house with five underage children who are not old enough to report that someone's trying to engage them in a sexual manner. I know for a fact that there's no Child Protective Service Department in the United States who's going to allow the child sex offender convicted or not because it's not the uh, legality of her actually having been convicted of a crime that matters. It's the fact that she's a child sex offender, period. Um, that in, so not from a legal aspect, but from a psychological standpoint, there's no Child Protective Service Department in America who knows that a child sex offender is living in a home with young children who would not either, either remove her or remove the children from the home. And just in my personal opinion, as a black man, as a psychologist, as an educator, I don't like that arrangement, and I think that you need to do something about it like yesterday. Um, it may be in your best interest to take her to the closest hospital, the closest emergency room, and to let them know 
you know, that she's a child sex offender and she needs help and she's currently living in a home where, where children are present and you don't want to lose your children so that, and you feel that this woman needs to be hospitalized. I mean, listen, and listening to her talk, um, it sounded as if she was like. I mean, cut you off, doctor. She is being apologized. Okay. But I no had tried, I had took her to net care. I gave her all her information. I talked a lot about evaluation. I took her to the police station. I took her to the sheriff. I took her to the Mulcahy police station. I even took her to her counselor. I did all that. They told me they and that's to MRDD for a talking about evaluation. They told me she know what she. They deny her service. And the reason why they deny her service is because she knows exactly what she's doing. So it's not more like a, a put away in a hospital. It's more like put away in prison. Because any time somebody touch somebody's child, she'll be in prison. She had done over 10 kids, and I did, I did not know she done any kids. I had no grandma at that time. If you're well, to keep her I'm not looking I'm for her to be remanded to jail. I'm looking for her to be remanded to a psychiatric treatment facility. She needs to be hospitalized. Clearly listening to her as a 23-year-old, if I had to guess yeah. the age, of the person I was listening to, I thought she may have been closer to 12 to 15. Um, it sounds like there's more going on here than I'm hearing. Um, it sounds like that she may have other issues in addition to the pedophilia and the incest issues. It sounds like there's other things going on here. I don't know if she has any cognitive limitations, any intellectual deficiencies. Um, I don't know if there's any type of a psychosis going on, but she does not and, again, I'm not face-to-face -face with her, so this is just going off, you know, listening to her on this interview. But it sounds like that she's emotionally and psychologically not at the age of a 23-year-old. She sounds a lot younger than that, which automatically raises concerns that there's other psychological issues here. But it's crystal clear to me that this is a very strong candidate for inpatient psychiatric treatment care, and I don't know why the state isn't moving on this i tell you what I'd like you to do. I would like for you to give me a call and give me her information. I'll contact the state myself. She can't be in that house with, you, with those other children. She cannot. That is trouble waiting to happen. God forbid whether or not it has already happened, but she should not be in, a children, in the same house with young children. No way in hell should we allow that. And you yourself, you can't allow that either. You can't take the risk of everything she's been through being repeated in each of the lives of those five children, and that's exactly what's going to happen if she don't get out that house. Um, I would like to call Child Protective Services in your state myself, uh, and I can do that the 24 hours in every state because that's the law. Give them her name. Give them your address, and I don't want those children to be taken from you, but I would rather have those children out of your home than have her there with them. So it has to be okay. one or the other, but she can't stay in there with those babies. She can't. Okay, and don't say, uh, sir, uh, right now, this is the last chance house. Like I said, I have like three and a half years. So we all, it's moving now next month, and we're splitting up. My daughter is the person that's touching kids is moving together, and she don't have any kids. So she's willing to continue to help her and go counsel her at their place. So she might have kids. Then be me and my so other baby. Going to to the same place. She may be moving because, of course, I'm – primarily concerned about those five children, but I'm also concerned about her. I mean, she's a victim in her own right. Um, you know, I have experience working with child sex offenders, you know, and I understand that she has also been traumatized. She has also been victimized. She spoke of how her parents sexually, verbally, and physically abused her. So that's why I want to make sure we understand that I'm looking at this from a psychiatric treatment perspective, not from a legal incarceration perspective, because there's going to be no healing and no rehabilitation in the prison. I'm looking at it from a psychiatric treatment perspective, and just hearing this is rather odd because the, I just find it real difficult to believe that there's any state, any county, that's going to let her stay in that house with those children knowing she's there. Yes? I thought I heard someone speak. I'm sorry. But, yes. I'm going back to counseling. You said you're going back to counseling. Yes. Okay, which is good, which is good, Princess, but that's not enough. You need more than counseling. You need psychiatric inpatient care. That's what you, you really need to be hospitalized, even if it's just temporarily. You need to be hospitalized, and even if they don't hospitalize you, 
they at least need to put you in a facility that does not have children in it. And that's the law. A child sex offender cannot be in a place with children. That whether it's the Her home or the she can, she's on the that can help me. Say that again. Marvina, don't I have no kids. She can she can help me and get and I'll okay. take her to counseling. Okay, but when are you leaving to go live with her? Next week. Next week. What day? What Friday. day are you leaving that house? Friday. Okay. This is what I want. I would like for your caretaker to call me after this show today to give me her address. And I'm going to call Child Protective Services in that county and let them know, okay, that there is a person living in that house, okay, who has engaged in sex with children and who is, and who is addicted to having sex with children and that they need to come and remove either you or those children from that home. It's not my fault. It's no, I'm not fault. blaming you. I'm not blaming you. I'm not blaming you at all. I'm I simply stating that. that you should not be in the same house with those five little babies. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's my no, I understand. Fault. I totally understand. And you've been victimized it's in your own right. I understand. I totally understand. And I, and I empathize with you. I understand what you're going through. I empathize with you. I work with dozens of cases of children who were child sex victims. And one of the things that I find most common amongst okay, child so sex perpetrators. Like I'm talking to at all. Which my, which no, I understand. Care? How about you need no help? Am, it's not my I understand. Fault. I and I understand sex. how you feel. And I'm sorry that you've had to go through those things. But we can't have you in the house with those children. We need to get you help. So we need to be proactive and reactive at the same time. Proactive or reactive, we've got to get you some help. Proactive, we got to get you out of the house with those five days. You can't do that. Not one more night. And take the counseling. And give me some help. And I can better myself. I can't understand what you're saying. Slow down. I need you to talk slower. Go ahead. My sister don't have no kids. She can help me take the counseling. I can get back my medication and start doing better with myself, start taking care of myself the right way. Well, see, here's my concern. Here's my concern. Here's my concern. There's no guarantee. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, quiet and listen to me. There's no guarantee that where you go, you're necessarily going to get the help that you need. Even if you go and live with another relative, there's always the possibility that you may actually offend in that community. There's always the possibility that you may actually engage someone else's child into some form of sex. Okay, and we don't want you offending any other children. Say that again. I don't trust it. I don't, I don't trust it and I don't like it. Um, I'm going to turn it back over to King Samir. But um, I would like your caretaker to call me immediately after the show. I'm going to call Child Protective Services tonight uh, and let them know what's going on in that home. If I don't get a call from her, I'm going to ask that King Samir provide me with the address. That's all I need. And as a psychologist, I call Child Protective Services in that county. It's not something that I like to do, but until the black community has its own institutions where we can service our okay. own children okay. and our own people, we cannot allow you to be in that house with those babies. That is wrong and it's unfair, and we have to do something about it. Samir, the mic is yours. I can't hear her. All right. I don't care about the... The uh, children's services, they can't do that to me. I wasn't convicted until sex offender. Now I'm getting some help, yeah. I'm taking care of myself the right way. Mom, dog is talking with my caretaker. My Venus is helping me. I'm going to go back to Carol, please. Yeah, okay, but I, don't see, know I need to You're get. in the house with five children. You're a child okay. sex offender, and you're in the house with five children um, who are not him. old enough to report any type of abuse. I face my all the time. Listen, 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 caller. You gotta listen. We're trying to. Like I'm doing something wrong. No, but you are doing something wrong. You are. You are doing something wrong. At the same time, you are molesting. You are. Listen, listen, listen. Okay, I I want you to just listen right now. Okay, you are doing everything wrong. Okay, you are hurting. You are hurting our race. 
can't kiss your mother dog. I'm okay, for all the time. All right. Let's let's <laughs> let's go to the phone lines. In fact, let's take a small break. Let's take a small break. Let's let's calm this down. All right. We're gonna take a one song music break, and we'll be right back at you. Seven six zero five six nine seven six seven six is the number. The code is nine four eight six five six. Caller, you hold on the line, okay? Don't hang up. We'll be right black at you after this one song break. Ah, we're black. We're black. We're black. We're dealing with black women pedophiles. Uh, caller, are you still with us? Yes, yes. All right. Listen, I, I think um, I think that was about enough for now. I think we're just gonna stop right there. Okay. Well, that my sister's a pedophile too. Not just only me. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. What did you say? My sister is a pedophile too. Not just only me. That makes me seem like I'm a pedophile, but I'm hurt too. All right. Well, we're gonna have a show. We're gonna have a separate show. With your sister, okay? If 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 it if it at all can be possible, but right now, right now, we have to deal with you, okay? Because we're trying to get you help, because you seriously need it. I'm, <laughs> you need help, okay? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give it to you My raw and real. My caretaker huh? help me. Okay, but it's not. It's, it's. It has to be a little deeper, because you just told me. Listen to me, okay? You just told all of us two days ago. You still had the urge to sexually engage with a child. But she had. Now I can years. see if you listen, 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 listen. Okay, just listen. I can see maybe if you said. I can see maybe if you said two months ago, okay, but you said two days ago. That's a problem with children in the home, okay? Now, suppose you may have touched one of those children in the home two days ago. Because uh, I definitely, we definitely need to hear from the callers and see what's on their mind. So... Uh, caretaker, I yes, thank sir. you, thank you, sister, thank you, uh, for you know doing what you're doing, at least striving to do something. Uh, yeah, you and I are going to talk on, on the sidebar. I'm going to give you a call after the show. Okay, I'm going to okay, put you with Dr. Day, Umar, so y'all can get that thing handled. All right. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I was not just dealing with only one child molester. I was I was dealing with two child molesters. Mm-hmm. One twenty two and the other was twenty four. And they both females. The twenty four year old be forcing sex on the twenty three year old behind my back while be sleep. With nice sharp objects, make her eat a bloody vagina, punch her beater, she tells me tell me what they done. Um, the other two houses that I'm at, my to this house over here. I said, I'm telling you what y'all doing. I can't do it no more. I'm not going to put you on my lease. So the 23 year old is telling me that the 24 year old is having sex or whatever, four sex in the basement, beating her on stuff. And the 24 year old refused that and stopped punching and beating the 23 year old in the face and stuff, denying that she was having sex or four sex on her sister. If you don't get mad and beat your sister for saying that, why do that? Because you get mad. Truth hurts. Mm-hmm. Um. The 24 year old always make her eat a play vagina. I mean, yeah, I ain't found that out until I moved to 819 where I'm at now. I was at uh, 2252. I was at uh, 3774. But now I'm at 819. And 819 the last chance house. 819 is the house that we all are about to move. We're all about to separate. And I'm about to read um, the child molester, uh, the first caller. is we're supposed to be moving with my daughter with no kids. She'll have no kids at all. We're supposed to take her back to the. Um, Counselor, we're supposed to take her back to the southeast. See what they're going to do. I'm going to give her a, a second chance now. But if I want to call, what do you want to call on her? They have to do by help me out because I've been trying to get help out from, from her for her since I had her. And by mm-hmm. refusing my services, I mean, she refuses me, she refuses to give us service for her. 
They deny her service for MR needy. I got papers to prove it. Um, that's all they know is sex. Her and her sisters, they've already been bought up. They've both been molested at the age of one years old. They've both been molested. Um, the prostitute out at the five or, at five or six years old. Walk around in this city or state where it was at talking about all my daddy's money maker. So that's all been drilled in their head. They know it's wrong, but they cannot help it. If you understand what I'm talking about. And I had it for three years. And my security is real tight here. She's in my room with me. I'm not worried about anything. As far as my grandmother, she do not look at my grandmother. She walk out the door where she face the wall. Because a real child blessed should not be around no kids, no school, no library, no daycare center, nothing like that. So by she not being convicted, I'll make sure that she not look at no kids not around me until I get some help. Until I let people know that she not manipulate people, she not a polite, and she's a good liar. But she is a child molester, and I go with that. Thank you, sister. Thank you. And I give you a strong black hand for everything that you're trying to do. But yes, you need help. You know, you I can't did. do it alone. This is this is this is what raising a nation is all about. Yes, sir. You know? Uh man. Well <laughs> I'm gonna um give you a call after the show and uh make sure you give your information. Brother Umar, are you still there? Uh, yes, I am. I can get from right. my phone number now. Okay. Uh, sister, make sure you get with Dr. Umar. You got my so phone number. Can... I'm going to call you right after the show. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Thank you. We greatly well, appreciate it. Down, sir. Yes, ma'am. All right. I'll see, talk to you later, then. Be blessed. All right. All right. Thanks. Brother Umar, we, we thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful words of encouragement and wisdom and advice, brother. Uh, man, uh, <sighs> we got a lot of work to do, black people. We have a lot of damn work to do. So while you're running around, popping off at the mouth, about unnecessary ignorance. These are the situations that we have to work on in our communities. So while you running around chasing Penelope, while you're running around just doing foolish stuff, just always remember to pay the hell attention. We got bigger issues in our communities to worry about. Huh? So Dr. Umar, brother, Thank you, black man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to go to the phone lines right now with uh, the time that we have left because I want to hear what some of y'all have to say. Let's, let's open the lines up. 760-569-7676. The code is 948-656. Let's go to the lines. Yes, i I just like to say for callers, we have, I see approximately 30 callers. So we have a lot of callers, and that's not a problem. But please make it short and concise so that we can get to one caller and get all of the callers in before the end of the show. And if we have to go over, we will. Uh, Brother Umar, are you staying with us on this, or you want to get off now? I'm here. Okay. All right. So uh, you got King Samir, uh, and I guess you got Brother Umar, and I'm going to the lines now. Um, 6007, you're live. Six zero zero seven. You're live. If your last four is in six zero zero seven, you're live. All right. Hello, Box X on the line. Box X. Yeah. What's up, Black Power family? Black, Black Power. Black Power. Soldier, how are yeah. you? Down in the belly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good down in the belly of the beach down here in Georgia, in this Georgia plantation, you know. All right. Y'all doing it's, all right? Yes, sir. We're good, brother. We're good. I was okay. definitely thinking about you today. I got some stuff coming to you, but uh, what, what's, what's your take on the show? And, and we got to be quick because we have so okay. many callers tonight, brother. Okay. But what's your I'm take gonna... on the show, black man? Well, one thing, it's a start and um. And uh, I got to pay homage to, you know, you all and for Dr. Umar and the caretaker 
and for you allowing them to come on the show because that's a very, very serious issue that we have in the black community because the majority of the people that's incarcerated in the Georgia prison system are sex offenders and all that, and I'd be trying to work with some of the brothers that been was sexual and physical abused by family members and stuff, and they are mm-hmm. doing it, continuing to do it in here because nobody giving them any help in the court system or the state. All they know is incarceration. Like, and I agree with Doctor Umar. This, this is not a criminal situation, man. That sister needs some help, and I feel that the only way she's gonna get any help, it gotta be somebody like you know Doctor Umar or somebody from the New Black Panther Party to be able to personally go and visit that sister and get that sister and take her and put her into some type of hospital, even if it's temporary, where they have it is predominantly all black because she's not going to get no help in no white mental institution nowhere in America. And she get the help she need, and and uh, she just a leaf off the tree and that in a private Manner, you need to get all the name of her sister and starting with a parent. And I think all of them need to get her help because just giving her help because her parents may be still out there doing the same thing, you know, to other yeah. children, stepchildren, her sisters out there doing the same thing. But she's to just a leap off the tree. And I can hear it in her voice, you know, that she going you know, she not feels that really is her fault. She knows it's wrong. But she know it's not a fault, and it's true. You got to go to the root of the issue. You know what I'm saying? Because even okay. if you get her some help, she got a whole family member out there that really turned her out and abused her. They need to be taken care of and taken off the streets as well. I don't care if they're 40, 50 years old, because if they did it to her, which is their own biological child, they doing it to other children out there as well. And I'm yes, sorry. You know, I don't mean to cut you off. Well, brother. I hate to cut you off, brother, but we yeah, gotta okay. no we gotta we gotta get get these callers in. But I appreciate it, brother Bach. Yeah. I appreciate you listening. And we're gonna talk, black man. We're gonna okay, talk. Then. All right, All right black power. All right, black power. You calling from an anonymous line? You're live. Uh yes. Um thank you so much for having me on. Um I'm actually calling from Southern California. And All right. what's your name? Shy. Okay. All right. Thank you for listening to the show. Well, I just, I'm really speechless, actually. Um, it's it's really just, it's one of the most tragic and unfortunate circumstances I've ever heard. And I'm grateful that you had a show to expose uh, something so obviously disturbing. And I'm actually very relieved that Brother Umar is actually going to talk to the caretaker and get involved. And it it really just goes to show that, you know, when you have a situation of community neglect, um, you know, family, uh, whatever, I don't know her family situation, but I I would have to imagine that perhaps there was some extended family that could have possibly seen into this circumstance long before it got to this point. But the important thing is that we're at a, a moment where, there is about to be an intervention, and um, I really just wish everyone, all of them, you know, the best, and I really pray for healing for this particular sister and just want to thank you all again uh, for doing the show and for Brother Umar being on. Thank you for listening and your support. Thank you indeed. You're welcome. All right. Next up. 8999, you're live. I'm just listening. All right. Thank you for listening. I'm going to kill her tonight. She's going to die. 9507, you're live. This is Jim calling from Alabama. I'm just listening in tonight. All right. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. No problem. Peace. 0159, you're live. Hi. My name is Tanya. I'm calling from San Francisco, California. Mm-hmm. Um. I just wanted to say that, that, like everyone else, thank you for having the show and exposing um, the whole situation. And I wanted to say that, you know, when I first saw the topic on Brother Umar's Facebook page, um, I really expected to be mad at this person because I just, pedophilia to me is just the ultimate crime that is, is in ways I think it's worse than murder. Um, but after listening to this girl, 
she is 5150, and that woman, the caretaker, needs to call 911 and have that girl picked up on a 5150. She is a danger to herself and to others. And if you call in 5150, they'll come and get her and immediately take her away, and then the hospitalization can begin. But I'm, I'm shaking. I'm so upset <laughs> right now. I, don't, I, I just, oh, my God, this is probably the sickest thing I've ever heard, and yet I, I really feel for this girl. I, I, re- <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I just, I, I feel for her, but yet she's twisted, and, and, and she's had a horrible life, and she just, she needs help. She needs help. The caretaker needs help. The sister needs help. All of them. All of them. Because the way they were talking about it, I don't even know if they realize how grave and, and the, the, the thing that was going on. To me, I didn't get the sense that any of them really kind of understood how serious it is, especially the caretaker. She kept saying how, oh, her grandbabies were safe and the security is tight. No, no. So I just I hope and pray this woman gets help, and that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> All right, thank you, sister. We appreciate your your comment, and uh, keep listening. Keep listening, because the shows are gonna do nothing from this point, but get hotter and probably make you even madder. But this is the process of learning. We're supposed to get mad when we hear the truth, because we have to look in ourselves deep down and say, "Damn, this is the reality of the black community." And we have to stop hiding from situations that we must deal with as a people. So thank you for calling in, sister. Black power. Three. Black power. Black power. This Black power. Black power, King. <laughs> Man, this subject is, it, it's, it's, who? I don't even know how to explain it. But it hit, it actually hits home because, me and his sister, it's around. We're around the same age, and I mean, I've been, I've been where she been. You know, I've been molested for for years, basically. Me and her been in the same situation, and it gives no excuse to what you're doing to a child. Period. She, I mean, I heard several times. You know, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. Sister, wake up. Period. Wake up. Because I've been where you've been at, and I don't do any of that, any of it. That's like someone saying, okay, well, this person did that to me, so I'm going to go kill someone else and blame it on them. It gives no excuse. Mm-hmm. You know, so, and I have a child of my own, you know, and it's, it's it really hits home. So, yes. <laughs> All right. yeah. Thank you, sister, for calling in. Appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. All right. Zero eight nine two. You're live. Um, yes, my name is Felicia Gibson. I'm calling from Union, New Jersey. And right now I'm pretty much blown away about the topic of the show. It brought back some memories. I used to work in a social work setting, basically in Chicago, Illinois. And I was a teacher assistant on top of that in a special education school. So I used to deal with kids who had been sexually molested and all of that. And I know it's like basically draining, spiritually draining on an individual where you have to constantly watch a person. That caretaker is drained. Mm -hmm. And my main concern really was like, came to me was when she said that she was going to move her in with her daughter. Now, I don't know how old her daughter is, but the fact that the girl is 23 years old, she's she's a grown woman, and she is not pretty much in her right mind, you know, because this is beyond just the, the sexual abuse that she had went through from her parents. Obviously, there was some more deeper abuse that went on from her parents. Mm-hmm. And if... She was to try, if she was to basically to stop taking her medication and have an outbreak in that house, like your caller said, that she is a danger to herself and a danger to others as well, which means that she can hurt the caretaker's daughter. Mm. If she really get upset and angry enough, because physically when they are out of control like that, you cannot stop them. One person cannot stop them. 
I used to t- do takedowns on kids, on teenagers. It would take three staff members to control a teenager. Now, can you imagine a woman trying to control a woman in that frame of mind? Mm. You would need at least about two men to control her, mm. two or three, because she is going to, you know, she's going to get out of control. Mm. So I hope and pray that Dr. Umar does follow through on getting the caretaker everything, you know, all the help that she needs, and at least get the children out. I know right now she probably is, I'm not for sure how the setting is right now, but when it, when she hung up the phone, I was really concerned because you could hear it in her voice. She was really upset. Mm-hmm. And so you can imagine that when she hung up the phone, now she has to calm her down. Mm-hmm. That's just too much on on that lady, and she sounded like she was a, you know, an older lady, probably in her 50s or 60s. That's just too much on one person. Yes, ma'am. That's all I have to say. Thank you, sister. We appreciate your call. 4382, you're live. Yes, peace. Peace, black power. This is Sister Linnea. Um, All right. I have been listening to this show just, oh, I, I don't know, brother, I don't know how you even did this interview. It would it would have been so difficult for me to, to do this. But the question I had that really um, wasn't touched on was, like, how how did the caretaker get, um, like, custody of this woman? Like, what is her role? Is she being paid for this? Like, does the young lady get some sort of mental check or what? That's what I was trying to understand. Like, how did she come into taking this role? Mm. Uh... I can't answer that, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I know how it happened, but I cannot answer that. I would have to, you know, let, let the caretaker explain that to you. Okay. Um, you know, I, just, I uh, really hope that she gets some, some help. Um, I, I don't, I mean, you try to have faith that she would get help and that it would work, but she is really at a point, like in serious denial, that she knows, you know, what she did is wrong, but she's trying to justify what she did. So I, I, I don't even know what to say. I'm still, I'm, I'm speechless. Hmm. Well, I'm thank you for calling. I'm listening. And, and it's definitely a very valid question. And uh, I will strive, sister, to have that answer for you very soon by next week's show. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh-huh. All right. Anonymous caller, you're live. Oh, hey, brother, uh, brother irritated, brother Umar, uh, brother, brother Samir. This is brother Larche. Just wanted to say what's up, and I'm listening to the show. Um, I agree with the first two ladies initially uh, in their statements as far as uh, how, how to deal with it, and uh, it it would be hard for me to even – get back into remembering exactly what was said. But um, I'm just, just listening to the show, man, and uh, please somebody help her seriously because she definitely doesn't need to be locked up as far as a jail uh, in my eyes. She needs help, and and if she can't deal with that help, then she just needs to go to sleep permanently. And that's no disrespect to her, but she seems like she wants help in some kind of way, even though she was just lying. Um. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, a few things you asked her, she, she, she changed the stories up, like, you know, with, and, and, and didn't even explain anything about it. But she sounded all nonchalant and funny style about it, and I don't know. It was weird, but she definitely has mental issues, and uh, those need to be fixed. Anybody can do better if their mental issues are taken care of, and if they're still doing wrong, then that's when they need to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, God bless you guys. Take care. Black power. Thank you, sir. Black power. I'm just listening still. Brother Jeff from D.C., you're live. Black liberation, bro. Black liberation, brother Jeff. What's up, King Samir? What's happening, black man? How are you? I'm all right, bro. Good, I'm calling good, you good. today. I was happy, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I, my first time, I've been a little busy my first time. 
calling the show though out my new apartment. So I'm happy about okay. the Black Power uh, apartment. Yes, sir. We so we had to bless your apartment tonight, huh? <laughs> but then and man, this is probably my first time. Bro, can I cuss Jeannie, man? This is my first time, man. Not no N word. Long as it ain't no N word. I know, I don't gonna be no N word, bro. Okay. Go ahead, black man. Go ahead. Hey, bro, but I'm hearing this sick shit, man. I'm like, well, ho, man, I had to send you the mess. I'm like, ho, is this a joke? I know this sister ain't no here talking about. Oh, my, my goodness, I'm sorry for even saying sister. Because she damn sure ain't no sister of mine. But, man, this sick fucking person, man, called and talking about they done raped 10 babies. Then you asked her. She said she liked it. So it's only one fucking solution for that now. She been molested. Okay, my bad. I'm sorry about that. I, my heart go out to her on that issue. But then my heart come back because she done chose to rape more babies. Now, I, I don't know, man. I don't know because I ain't never been molested. But I don't know. It don't, I don't think that that just give you the fucking right to go out here and start raping babies now. So the only... And brother Umar, I'm sorry, you get cut out the conversation, man, because ain't no helping this motherfucker right here. They got to go. That's the only way. Because now they done created 10 babies that might be, God willing, they not 10 homosexuals that's going to go out here and touch people. And helping her is not going to do nothing. She need to be. She need to be eliminated off the face of this goddamn earth. And instead of the police marching in her house, some other people need to march in there and get get rid of her, especially away from them kids. Bro, I'm, I'm, I mean, ain't nobody saying, everybody talking about jail, no jail in the hospital. Ain't no fucking hospital. It's some, it's some it's six feet of dirt that's lonely right now for people like her. And that's where the fuck she need to be, man. Ain't no helping her. Ain't no helping nobody, whether they black or not. When they out here raping 10 babies and then say they like it. Nah, I'm sorry. So we need to go back to whoever raped her. They ass need the same treatment. There's no helping. Maybe one I can see. I can't even see that. Cause I'm talking out the side of my head now. But you can't do that to babies and expect to live on this earth. Whether you black or white. Especially if you're doing it to black babies. Because that's. That's damaging the race more further. That's creating more homosexuals because that's how we got started being homosexuals because we was raped and molested. We weren't born like that. And that's all I got to say, man. I don't, I don't see no solutions with no medicines and no hospitals and all that. Nah, there's only one solution, just like with the crackers. Black liberation, brother. Black liberation, brother Jeff. Thank you for your comment, brother. All right, next caller. 8451. You're alive. Hello, everybody. How, how y'all guys doing tonight? All right. Who's calling? Uh, Maurice, North Carolina. All right. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm just listening. Um, I agree with the callers. Uh, something needs to be done about her. Uh, she shouldn't even be in society, period. All right. All right. Uh, I'm just listening. Uh, All right. Keep on listening, black man. Thank you. appreciate your support. All right. My brother, my brother from another mother. <laughs> Brothers cheaper. Black Power. Hey, Black Power, bro. How you doing, man? I'm good. What's happening? Man, man bro, 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 bro. You already know, man. I'm on the brink of tears over here, man. And uh, By the way, let me start. Bro. This is Brother Jamalo from Brothers Keepers, brothers and sisters. Um, <laughs> One of the... uh. The sister called in and said that she was wondering why this caretaker, you know, how she got in that position. And I do believe that she probably received some type of monthly stipend um, for having this uh, woman in the home. And uh, hearing her story, you know, and it's just a reciprocation. Um, like Samir said, you know, we weren't born into this thing. You know, the, uh, the cracker gave it to us. You know, we have an ill-gotten illness. But... I remember uh, studying Chairman Mao after the uh, war when he told his people, you know, I, I can't fault you for 
falling victim to all the America's of drugs and alcohol and bad habits that you picked up from. However, I'm going to give you a certain amount of time to straighten yourself up, and if you don't, you got to go. Mm. And it, it's, it's, uh, it's almost the same thing for us, man. And my heart goes out to the sister because she's someone she should not supposed to be due to something happening to her that should not, <coughs> excuse me, have happened to her. So she's totally outside of herself right now, but however we can not allow her to continue Mm. to put her pain upon innocent people. Mm. Mm. It it is tough. Could you really quickly tell them about the book that you're doing, brother, so people can know about that? Yeah, man, I'm uh, I'm working on the book, man, and it it seems like it's taken me forever. Um, It's uh, entitled Memoirs of Molestation and Beyond. And uh, like Mm. a couple of callers have said, you know, most of us don't even know how we could have done this type of interview. So, Brother Samir, my uh, hat goes off to you, Brother. So, you Thank you, sir. It's a real work tonight, my brother. And, Thank you, uh, Frank. what I'm doing is actually interviewing sisters and brothers who have been raped and or molested. And I'm hearing so many horror stories, you know, and, uh, bro, it gets depressing. To make a long story short, you know, it, yes, it, it, it gets depressing, <laughs> man, and I have to get up off of it for a couple of months, you know. To keep my own sanity, you know, this brothers and sisters going through those type of situations is hurtful. And uh, but hopefully, you know, the cre- the, cre- the creator go on and let it be, you know, done when it needs to be done. But it's something serious, bro. It's something serious. Hmm. Ah, man, brother Milo, yes, thank you, Black Man, for for your words of wisdom. And I definitely uh, let 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 me say this to everybody. Let let me say this. Because, uh, well, to the fact of how am I able to, I guess, compose myself and keep my composure. Um, I'm hurt like hell, y'all. I, I ain't even going to sit here and bullshit you, okay? I'm hurt. I mean, I've been through this situation, this type of situation as well, not as a molester. <laughs> Let me clarify myself. I've been molested as a child as well. Um so I understand, you know, in in one one degree, I understand. But it was very it was it was very hard for me to actually sit here and uh listen to the sister when I first spoke with her. But it was a learning experience. And and sometimes family and studying and learning knowledge is not going to come pretty all the damn time. Knowledge is not going to come always by come you know always come by a DVD. It ain't going to always come by a book. It ain't going to always come by a tape or a, a, a PowerPoint. Sometimes you're going to have to get out in these damn streets and talk to our people and get inside the heads and the minds of our people. And that's what I've done. I've been out in the streets, man, talking to our people, trying to organize and mobilize and wake our people up. And even in dealing with this kind of situation, yes, it was hard as hell. It was very hard for me, man, sitting there looking this woman in her face while she's telling me this stuff, man. That shit was hard, man. I ain't even going to bullshit you. It was hard. It was hard to keep my composure from knocking her damn head off. Seriously. But the discipline, the discipline of being able to learn and still maneuver and still deal with this thing and keep moving forward, it's not an easy job, family. This, <laughs> this is not, it's, it's not easy being me. It's really not. I mean, it may seem like everything is hunky-dory. I wake up and just say, hey, crackers, and that's my world. But it's really not. Because I give a damn, I love black people, and I'm going to do everything I could possibly do to wake us up. So some of these shows 
ain't going to be, you know, the, the old fireball. It's not going to be that all the time. Because we're dealing with issues that's keeping us sick as hell. And these are the kind of things we raised in the black community. We got to stop hiding from this stuff, man. We got to stop acting like we so damn militant we can't even deal with the basic needs of our people. And I feel all of your pain. I feel it all. But I have to be a wise general. I have to be a wise teacher, not just a teacher that's just stuck in the box. So I got to open up, and some things is going to hurt your damn feelings. You're supposed to be hurt right now. Because we're talking about what affects us inside as a people. Let me, let me just leave. Let's, let's go back to the, to the phone lines. Let's go back to the lines. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Milo, for calling in. I appreciate your, your support. And, Brother, you definitely have my support on that book. I, I need a copy. And if anything I could do to help you, you know, add on to the book, let me know, Brother. Let me know. <laughs> Nine nine two one, you're live. A baby for ODA. G Day from Omali, from uh Mayasa family, United Front. Um I mean same thing here, family. I'm I'm over here speechless and um all I wanna say to kind to kinda of reiterate what uh what the um brother King Samir already said and and um and that is man for uh, for us, I mean, let's be real. A lot of us been around situations where we know something funny was going on, you know, <clears throat> and we kind of just uh, brush it off or, you know, leave things alone, man. And, and I mean, you know, we we really need to be serious about protecting our babies, man. I, I got a child. I got a lot of nieces and nephews, and it's not a game for me. You know what I mean? I could tell y'all stories about, you know, me ready to do some real crazy stuff to people, man. So, <laughs> like I said, you know what I mean, you know, just to keep it short, is that for all those that are listening and, you know, there's some funny stuff going on around you, act. You know what I'm saying? Don't just let it escalate or, or you know, I knew something was wrong with this person when they was young. You know what I mean? Right. Seriously. Right. Seriously. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, black man. We appreciate your call. Ah, man, it's, 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 it's a touchy topic, but hell, slavery is a touchy topic. <laughs> White supremacy is a touchy topic, and this is just one of the many uh, leaves, as Brother Boxer X said. This is just one of the many leaves from the tree of white supremacy. So trust me, family, we, we ain't really gone in yet. It's going to get deeper. It's going to get deeper, and there's going to be plenty of things we're going to talk about to make your eyes tear, make you want to go out here and kill some damn body or whatever. But at least I know we're dealing with growth and development as a race of people. Honestly, I haven't slept in a good night's sleep, seriously, because I had all of this on my mind, and it was mind-boggling as hell, <laughs> straight up. So I had to bring it to you. I had to bring this to you. I know we're supposed to have been going through our, uh, our, our, our answers for our uh, slavery syndrome test and getting into the slave labor and all that. Well, hell, we're still dealing with slave labor right now. And, bro, we got like 12 more callers. All right, let's take them. All right. Callers, right. if you could be quick so we can just fly through. And I, I, I want to make sure everybody gets in. So let's be quick, all right? Five zero six seven, you're live. Uh, bless how, brothers. This is a uh, brother Tika Man from Jackson, Mississippi. How y'all doing tonight? All right, Black Power, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for everything you've done, sir. Uh, I'm gonna just make this real quick because I'm I'm kind of familiar with this situation because I know because I'm down here in Mississippi and I know the rural area is a family that's just like that. You know, multi generational, you know, rapists and child molesters, and and I know. I know the old ones who started, they seem kind of sane, but the younger ones, like in their 20s and stuff, who molesting children, they seem kind of slow and re retarded and all that. 
I know, and I'm not saying what should be done because I'm not a professional, but I understand that a lot of people got violent feeling towards this sister. But I believe this sister is true retarded, you know, and she needs help, and that's all I got to say, brother. It's black power. Thank you, sir. Black power. Uh, all right, next caller. Four, six, two, three. Hey, hey, Black Power, this is Brother True. Black Power, hey, uh, Brother True. What's up, God? I salute, Comrade. Peace of the God. Is uh, Brother Umar still on the line? Yes, yes sir. I am. Okay, peace, Brother. Um, I actually got a question for you. I know we're dealing with time. I'm not sure if you can answer it. Um, I'm a father of three. Now, two of my children don't live with me. They live with their mother, and I get them every other weekend, so... Basically, when I pick them up, you know, we go through routine, peace, how y'all doing? Did anybody violate you? Did anybody touch you? They answer my questions. They say no. But a question that I have for you, brother, being that you deal with that for the study, is um, because, you know, sometimes children lie because they're afraid. And obviously, there's some things I can't control. Like, for example, uh, my children every day after school stay with an uncle. I mean, I know I know the brother, cool, but you never know. So my question to you is, just for the for is there any signs or anything that we can look for just in case, you know, children are lying because they're scared or or what have you. Is there anything that you can any signs or any symptoms or anything of a poss- possibility that they might be uh molested or anything might be going on? Well every child is different, so the manifestation of symptoms and signs of a child who has been touched or molested it's going to vary from child to child. The number one thing I recommend in that in that interest is to just make sure you know your children well. Uh, mm-hmm. For example, in some children, bedwetting will start where it previously wasn't there. Other children, they may mess on themselves overnight when they previously didn't do it. Some children begin to mess on themselves in a day. Anxiety, sadness, depression, loneliness. Uh, I mean, there's a host of symptoms that could go along with molestation, uh, you do want to ask your children, but you don't want to beat them over the head with it. You just want to make it clear to them that they could come to you and talk to you about anything, and from time to time you want to check in with them just to see if anything's being done because one thing we also know that we don't want to uh, begrudge or labor the children too much because you can also create a false memory, and it's people who have been put in jail uh, for pedophilia and sexual offenses that they never committed simply because the idea of being molested was put into a child's mind. And so when they were actually questioned about whether or not Uncle Johnny touched them, they said Uncle Johnny did touch them when, in fact, he didn't because they were constantly bombarded with the idea that he may have touched them. So you do want to check in with your children, but you don't want to overdo it because you can create a false memory in the mind of a child. Indeed, brother. I appreciate that. Good looking. 0813, you're live. Hi, um, my name is Monique, and I'm calling from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, right. I'm just, Yeah, I'm just really kind of disturbed by a couple of things that she said, especially with our eight-week-old, because I have a nine-week-old, and what really mm-hmm. made me cry is that she said she hit the baby in the head with her fist when she, while she was raping her. So that really, really, really got to me. And this is just my personal opinion, and I, I agree with a couple of other brothers, that says something about um, they should be kind of eliminated. I think those types of people don't, there's really no help for them because I think they kind of far gone. And I think the best thing for them is not to even be nowhere on this planet. And that's a harsh thing to say, and I'm sorry that she was molested and all that, but it just, she <laughs> uh, other pedophiles. You know what I mean? When she molested the children, it just it really, really got to me. So that's really all I wanted to say. All right. Thank you, sister. We appreciate it. No problem. All right. 9909, you're live. Peace and Black Power. This is King Jason Allah calling from Petersburg, Virginia. I'm just on here. I'm so, you got to speak up, black man. We can barely hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, a little better. Uh, peace and black power. This is King Jason Allah from Petersburg, Virginia. I'm All right, black li- power. Black power. I'm just up on here listening, man. I just want to thank you, brothers, for bringing such a topic to light. But this is the kind of stuff that doesn't really get talked about anymore. We need to just get back, get really get back to the community awareness 
rather than talk about all this other crazy stuff that we're talking about. Thank you, and Black Power. Thank you, sir. 7327. Seven. Black Power, Black Power. It's Sister Mosa Kemra and Sister Layla and Gozi in the house. All right, Black, Black Power, Power Black Power. How are you? We're doing just fine. All I right. Just to say, hey, um, Sister Layla want to say something, Samir. Go ahead. I'm just just speak to up, say, sister. I'm, I'm glad that you chose to do this. We do need to, in our community, especially the black community, we need to hear, it needs to be exposed. I'm not going to bag on the young lady. I, I'm tuning in late, but I just wanted to share an experience that I had. I've never been molested, and I've never molested anyone. I'm a single mother of two wonderful children. And um, I was a teacher, uh, um, Head Start teacher. And, you know, the Head Start uh, caters to the the low income. And this Mm -hmm. was 15, 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, We we had all black population in in the Head Start community. And um, I had to turn a parent in because her child was had came in and she was sexually abused. And that hurt me to my heart. It wasn't the mother that did it. The mother was on crack. And the child, whoever dropped her off, had sexually they raped her. And, I mean, the child, she acted out, she screamed, she yelled, she couldn't sit down. You know, this this was a three-year-old child. But it hurt me to my heart, and I'm I'm very close to my children. I think uh, just like uh, the brother just said, watch your children. Don't beat them up, but be mindful of their friends. Be mindful of who they hang with. Talk to them. And don't just talk to them. Be around them. You know, spend time with them. Or, you know, don't just drop them off at the mall and think that they're going to be okay. Be with your children. I mean, you can't just, you can't trust everybody anyway. But I really, I I really commend you for doing this because we, we need to hear more about it. And thank I you. thank you. Thank you. One eight seven two. You're live. Black Power. Black Power. Who's calling? Okay. This is Catherine. How are you, sister? I'm good. Um, good. I'm enjoying the show, and I want to say it's really ironic that you're having this topic because I can relate to a lot of what um, the lady was talking about, also, and the other guy that was saying that he was writing a book. I'm also writing a book talking about some similar stuff because particularly, you know, when I, I think I was like 13, I remember, um, I didn't actually do it, but I had thoughts about it when I was babysitting my own nephews thinking about it. You know, the thoughts was coming through my head of doing it. And, you know, I think the more I think about it, I, you know, wondering why I was even having those thoughts. I'm thinking, you know, because it happened to me, you know, I guess, I, I don't know, that's how it happened. And um, as far as when she was talking about having sex with the dog, I had thoughts about doing that too. And, I, I, you know, I don't know how that even came to pass. I had thoughts about it, but I didn't actually do it. And I think over the years I started having, you know, being very promiscuous, having a lot of sex to numb the pain, you know, of what was really going on instead of actually dealing with it through just sex on top of sex to deal with it. And I I think a lot of people are going through similar situations, but it's like a topic that we don't talk about in our community. Yes. And um, I think it's good that we talk about it. It starts with communication, you know. I don't know. All right. Well, mm, I'm glad you uh, dropped that 
on us, sister, because it, it makes us all look at ourselves. You know, everybody should be reaffirming, reassuring themselves and your children. You know, right. so this is another reason I had to bring this to the table, you know, because it's, it's, it's on the rise in the black community and no one is speaking on it. But we're exactly. suffering from it day to day to day. So it's, I had to bring this to the table. All right. So we thank you for calling in, Queen. Thank you. All right. Eight, two, eight, five. Hello. How are you? All right. We're black and strong. How are you? Who's calling? Uh, my name is uh, Derek, and I'm calling from Asheville, North Carolina. All right. Yeah, you know, this is listening to this uh, show is very interesting. This is um, extremely enlightening, and um, and uh, to be honest with you, as a pers- as a so-called conscious person in the African community, you know, I kind of un- am unaware of you know <laughs> child porn or whatever or molestation, you know, and, you know, especially amongst uh, women. And um, I'm trying to, can you help me understand where does this stem from, or is this a societal uh, consequence, as it were? Uh, I'll let Dr. Uh, Umar answer that. Are you still with us, Brother Umar? Uh, Sure, sure. One thing that we find in common amongst those who suffer from pedophilia, or all pedophiliacs, sexual offenders, Mm -hmm child sexual offenders or what have you, nearly all of them suffer from child abuse, verbal abuse, sexual abuse, or physical abuse. It's almost a guarantee that if someone is a pedophile, if someone is a sex offender, they generally suffer some trauma in their own childhood. And as is true with most mental illness, the perpetrators are also victims themselves. The perpetrators are also victims themselves. This young lady who we were talking to today who admitted to these types of behaviors, I recognize that she is a victim in her own right, which is why I see no future in her being rehabilitated through prison. She's only likely to get worse. What she needs is psychiatric care. The problem, the problem is that in most states there's not enough psychiatric care to go around and especially for black people. And although I would hate to see her incarcerated, um, if that's the only way in the short term that it can be guaranteed that she not offend against any other child, then that's what, that's what would have to happen. Unfortunately, the monies that used to go to psychiatric care now goes to incarceration. So you're more likely to get help in prison than out of prison, but we know it ain't much help in prison. But to answer your question, nearly all sexual offenders were themselves molested, raped, verbally, or physically abused as children. So it is a vicious, perpetuating cycle. We tend to find it intergenerationally. And one thing I do not support, as I've heard several of the callers did say, was that they favored extermination. That 23-year-old girl is a victim, and she's a victim for a lot of reasons and through a lot of different channels. And for the black community, for any of us, to advocate that she be murdered as a result of being victimized, I think is sick. And for us to say that the best way we can deal with child sex offenders, pedophiliacs, is to kill them is also absurd. If we really wanted to stop sex offending in the black community, do you cut it off at its source? You treat the cause. You don't treat the symptom. The cause was the abuse. The cause was the psychological alienation. Help those children. Help those families. Prevent these types of acts from being perpetrated against our youth in the first place. But to say that I know I'm guilty of not building the institutions that my community needs to prevent this type of filth from developing, and knowing that I did not do what I was supposed to do to prevent this from happening, but now I'm going to favor exterminating the victim, is no different than the white man who says, I'm not going to give you a job, but if I catch you selling drugs, I'm going to throw you in jail. If we're saying we're not going to do anything to prevent child sex offenses, 
but we're going to exterminate the offender, then we no different from the white man who says, I'm not going to give you a job, but I'll throw you in jail if I catch you selling drugs. We have to stop yeah, being yeah. reactionary and start being proactionary. You know, I was diagnosed with uh, bipolar a while ago, and I'm trying, I'm fighting back tears as I'm listening to you right now. And it's it's really sad that we just do not delve into the reason for things. We have like a very quick fix for things, you know, and um, to societal issues. And people, I guess when it comes to things like, you know, even murder or station, whatever, we stop short right there. Like, what shouldn't happen in the first place? We need to lock them up and throw it away a key or let you kill them. You know, and um, and you off, people are often criticized for asking why. You know, why does this person do that? Why, you know? And it's just that the why is, it's, 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 you know, imperative, you know, to be addressed as far as the healing of our people, I think, you know? And this is unacceptable to me that, you know, that we just totally accept for, you know, just totally uh, have a quick fix for everything. And that quick fix really, really works, you know? And, um, yeah. And um, and uh, it, it just it's, it seems that there's um, I don't know. Do you think it's just a possibility that there may be some Willie Lynch issues or some old slave issues, or like, or maybe some cross uh, enculturation that may have occurred as a result of our captivity? That uh, maybe you have all sorry, the you have all those issues occurring simultaneously yeah. with one another. We have all of that, and we're going to continue to get more. We have to recognize something. Because of our presence within the American social order, which is a psychologically unhealthy society to begin with, whenever you allow mm-hmm. your children to be reared in an unhealthy society, you should not be surprised that they develop unhealthy psychological traits. So the best you can do is develop your own institutions. That way you're able to control your children's minds. But as long as you are dependent on the institutions of another race, whatever they want to inculcate in your children, that's exactly what they'll have. So, again, we want people to come out normal by subjecting them to an abnormal socialization process. The bottom line is that the black community has to begin to take responsibility for the futures of its own children. You can't keep depending on European institutions and expecting your children to come out uh, healthy. It's insane. And then you want to uh, 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 promote exterminating them when they come out abnormal, when you're the reason they're abnormal in the first place by virtue yeah. of community neglect, by not building on the institutions that they need. We are all yeah. guilty of these crimes. Yeah. All of us. Uh, yeah, I like that. We, yeah, we are, you know, you know, myself included, because the fact that I did not take the time to know why these things occur and, you know, the fact that I have not done anything to help stop it, I need to take responsibility. Now, I did remember many of posts regarding um, I'm one of your uh, Facebook friends. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna have to, brother, I'm, I'm, I really hate to do this to you, but I'm going to have to uh, <laughs> cut you off because we have other callers coming in, and, and they okay. have to, you know, they have to get on, but we thank you for your support. Just keep calling, brother. Keep calling. Keep listening to the show every week, and we're going to have more fire coming at you. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Well, uh, let me do this. And I I generally try as much as possible not to uh, come into a conversation because this is the King Samir show. And your guest is Brother Umar Johnson. And, you know, to me, both of y'all brothers, um, Brother Umar, for uh, always being there for our family. Brother, we thank you for so many things. We've called on this brother so many times. And every time we ask him for his assistance, Without any provocation or any hesitance, this brother lends his expertise and assistance right. to us at all times, so we thank you. And Brother King Samir, I can't even put into words what this means to me, what you did tonight, brother. You, you, you've you been a brother I love tremendously, but what you did tonight, you, you, you gained some, lots of points in my book. But I feel compelled to say something here because yes, i got to say one thing, and then I'm going to turn it right back over to you, Brother Samir. Because I'm one of the 
primary proponents and have been one of the initial people that I have heard or that I'm aware of who's gone on a you know, mission to exterminate pedophiles in the black community, I have to stand up for that position. I 100% respect Brother Umar. He's a healer. That's what he does. He heals our community. And I think that if he is a healer and he can heal our people, the only position he can have is that our people can be healed. Otherwise, he couldn't do his job. So I respect his position. However, I'm not a healer in the same way this brother is. I'm a cleanser. I'm looking at the victims of sexual abuse as the victims. And if somebody puts their hands on a black child, I want them dead. I don't want to talk about why they've done it. I want to stop it at the source, and I want to stop the cycle. I do want to send as many of our people to Brother Umar and other brothers and sisters out there like him. We need to give support to them because they can help our people. But once you decide you want to victimize our babies, I want you to die that moment or the moment before you actually get your hands on. I want you dead. I don't want to negotiate it. And though I respect his position, and I ain't going to say that he's wrong, I'm going to say there's nothing inside of my soul that's going to ever stop me from seeking the full extermination, not only of pedophiles that rape black children, but of the race that put pedophilia into our community that forces us to even have these kind of dialogues. So I just felt compelled because I can't sit here and act like I don't know that I'm one that's putting that message out there. We have a different message in that regard. And I respect the brother, but my message is going to always be the same. If somebody is guilty of sexual abuse in black children, they should die. And we will yes, respectfully sir. disagree on that point. My focus would be on eliminating the causes that bring that about. You can remove every European off the face of the earth right now, and you're still going to have pedophilia in the black community. And my argument is going to remain the same, and that is killing pedophiles does not eliminate the sickness. You have to cut it off at its core. To kill people when we're not uh, actually preventing that sickness from being developed in the children, there's no cure whatsoever. You'll be killing people from today until the end of civilization until we recognize that we have to cut it off at its source, uproot the illness, and that way you prevent the pedophile from being developed. But to exterminate someone who's already been victimized without first seeking to rehabilitate that doesn't make us any better than the European, and that's my position. All right. Back on you, brother. Well, yes, sir. <laughs> well, I'll say this. I see both sides. I see both sides. I, I do. I see both sides. Uh, I do believe in repairing the damage. I do believe in repairing the damage. But if the nail keep sliding out the two by four and the roof keep falling the hell down because the nail refuses to stay in its place to hold up the roof. The nail got to come out. The roof has to be rebuilt. So I'm going to take that damn weak nail and throw it away. I'm going to remove that weak nail that is causing my roof to continuously fall down. Where are the institutions for the children to exactly. prevent them from being exposed yes. to this illness? You cannot yes. preach exactly. death when you first haven't taken care of life. Exactly. And that's, that's where I'm going, trust me. But at the same time, again, I agree with both sides. I agree with both sides. I, I do. That's just where I'm at. But this was one of the reasons why I had to bring this to the table because I wanted everybody else's feedback. I wanted to hear from everyone else on how we should handle this thing. And, yes, it's just like saying to a drug dealer, stop dealing drugs, but, hell, I ain't got nothing to offer you. You understand what I'm saying? And we have to create our own health institutions, our own psychological institutions. We, we need our own damn nation, just period. But at the same time, <laughs> the other side of me, I, I look at these images of these children, and I don't know them. I don't know what these children look like. I just see images of black babies being raped, 
being grinded on, being a woman handled by a 23-year-old woman who knows better but refuses to do better. I mean, I, there's, there's, <sighs> there's something to be said there as well, Brother King, so I mean, not to complicate the conversation because I'm definitely not a supporter of that type of behavior. But at the yes, same sir. time, I recognize that the black community is also an accomplice to the crime by doing nothing to prevent it. And yes, when we say that she has control over what she does, she does and she does not. You have to recognize that pedophiliac behavior is based mm -hmm. on her trying to meet an unmet psychological need. It's very mm -hmm. sick. But the reason children or adults have sex with children is because they are seeking the intimacy that they never got from their own biological parents. That's why they choose young children, because they're looking for someone whom they can depend on who really does not have the opportunity to negate them when they attempt to engage for that emotional bond. That's why you see the neglect, the emotional neglect within the childhood profile of nearly all sex offenders. That mm -hmm. sex is an attempt to mm -hmm. reclaim that intimacy that they were deprived of by their parents. So they don't even understand a lot of times why they do what they do. The fact she Let me likes ask you a question. It doesn't Let me ask you a question, brother. Let me finish my statement. The fact Sorry. she likes it, okay, doesn't tell you any more about the situation than if she didn't like it, no more than a drug addict or a murderer, okay, likes doing what they're doing. Of course they like it. But what are the unconscious reasons for the motivations of the behavior? And that is she's lonely, she's isolated, probably depressed, and she's looking for someone to love her. And because her childhood experience taught her that she can't get it from her parents, she's going to get it from someone whom she can she can completely control, which is a young child, is sick, and it can't be tolerated. But we have to recognize where it started, her own neglect by her own parents who probably suffered from the same cycle. I'm saying treat the cause. Extermination right. as a solution is not a solution. Right. And she did say, she did say, see, we got to remember, family, she did say when I asked her, what is it about children? Okay, she did say because they don't fight back, they don't exactly. talk back. Exactly. You, you understand them? See, we have to be very have mindful. To her knee. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. She's a sexual addict. So I mean, even to the point of molesting her own eight-week-old daughter. Okay, we're dealing with a sex addict. How do we deal? And how do we deal with that degree first? Because remember, family, the white man taught us how to have sex. He taught us how to love. He taught us how to hate each other. He taught us everything the way we know about everything today. Seriously. Can, and we, can, we, 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 we have to remember that. Can this crack has taught us please? the basics of even having sex. I mean, <laughs> yes, sir. And I, I don't want to cut off, but... Is it, is it can I can I engage in this conversation? Yes, sir. Wait, how many more callers do we have? We don't have any more callers right now. Actually, Brother right. just just called back and he said he wants to get back on, but he's the only other caller. Okay, okay. Well, yes, sir. Please do. Okay. Um, here's my thing. First of all, I don't agree with the fact that it doesn't solve the problem because if you look at the problem, um, if you look at it from a narrow view, like the only thing you're going to do is kill somebody and you're not going to solve the problem. You're only looking at for one half of the, the issue because there's another issue that we're not considering. Pedophiles can range between 60 to 360 children that they will rape and molest before they pass. So when you kill a pedophile, it's not just that you're killing that person. You're preventing between 60 and 360 people who don't have to go through this from going through it. So when you consider that part of it, what I would say is if you care about the future of your race, 
you have to consider the full picture. Your objective is to do two things. One, to definitively ensure, and in definitively ensuring does not mean giving to some European to see if they can psychoanalyze them and then put them back in our community so that they can uh, uh, do the same thing again. To definitively ensure that this individual who is guilty, we're not talking about somebody suspected, guilty of raping a black child never can do it again. That's one. So no other black child will ever be a victim by that person. And secondly, you send in a message to everybody out there that, you know what, we are sick as a people. And we all got issues. Hey, I've done a lot of damage to our own community myself. I can't lie. I've done it. I've hurt people. But I'm going to tell you one thing. I got a, what, six-week-old baby girl? There ain't no, like, psychoanalysis you're going to give me. Somebody put their hands on my daughter. I'm, I'm, I'm going at them. I'm going at them with everything. And if there's anybody around who knew about it, I'm not playing no games. That's my daughter. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not leaving the well-being of my child up to some semantics in some, some doctor's office. Look, we got to have some rules in the black community, something that people know is sacred. If our children and babies ain't sacred, then we're going to get treated just like we're getting treated by the European because it's laughable. People don't, you gotta, if, if you can't say that if somebody rapes my child, I'm going to kill them. If that can't be the penalty for that crime, then there's no reason for us to continue to fight as a race because that means our children ain't even sacred enough for us to strike. We got to have something to strike on. And our people always find a clever explanation not to want to strike and, and shed blood. And I'm going to say if the, if, if, if the rape of a black child is not the line that we say, hell, you cross that, you got to die, then we don't have a line. And maybe we should be exterminated. First, let me say that the fact that there's causes to sexual abuse and pedophilia, okay, to admit that there's causes is not making a scapegoat or an excuse for the sickness. But it is idiotic to believe that by taking a life, you're preventing the sickness because pedophilia is not a bunch of individuals. It is a normal outgrowth of children who are subjected to an unhealthy and abnormal system that is not of their making and not under the control of their community. You can kill that one pedophiliac, but there's hundreds of others being developed. Furthermore, if you're going to kill the pedophiliac, you're going to have to kill them as children because most of them started out as child sex offenders molesting their own blood relatives when they were 7, 8, 9, or 10 years old before they were really able to recognize that what they were doing could qualify as rape or pedophilia. And the fact that their sickness, when it was treatable, went untreated by their own community, and now they're engaging in that behavior which has now become pathological as an adult, and now we want to step in and say we're going to kill them because we didn't get to them when we could have done something about it, and to ignore the fact that the person you're killing is being killed because they weren't properly raised, nurtured, and looked out, after as, looked out appropriately for by the community makes you a reactionary, and you cannot build any community now or in the future, with reactionary behavior. You're not fighting a bunch of individuals. Pedophilia is a force. You're going to see hundreds. You're going to get thousands. You're going to get tens of thousands until we decide to build our own socialization and education mechanisms for our children. But killing someone who molested a child is not going to stop those children from being molested because there's other ones. And just like with all sex offenses and offenders, it's difficult very difficult to identify beforehand exactly who is going to do the offending, okay, because not all trajectories are going to be the same. You don't, not only do you not know who exactly is going to do the offending, you don't even know who they're going to select for the offense itself. And so basically after you kill them, they have already committed the crime. So you say you kill them to prevent that 360 from going through the same nonsense? Well, guess what? Nine times out of ten, they'd already got to the 360 before you got to them because they started out as child sex offenders from the third and fourth grade. You ain't solving no problem like that. I got to say I respectfully disagree with that. The reality of it is, first of all, there has been nothing that has definitively proven that a sex offender can be rehabilitated. There That's is not nothing. true. That is not true. 
Wait, wait a minute. I, I'm, I'm, I'm proving on a higher level. The European is the one whose culture, since time immemorial, has been a pedophilic culture. Nothing that has occurred in the history of this world has stopped them from being pedophiles. They raped our children in slavery. They passed it on to us. They made us rape our own children. They're raping our children in uh, 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 reformatories now. They've created a system where our children get raped. They go around the world and put their military on people. And they rape people in Africa. They're training African troops to rape little boys and little girls uh, in, in, in the Abu Ghraib prison. We saw the pictures where they're raping men. The, the pedophilic instinct in the European, which is not some force that comes from nowhere, it comes from European culture, is the source of European culture. There is nothing that has shown that that can be curbed. The, 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 the instinct for Europeans to look to ravage the anuses and the souls of young boys is so deep that it permeates even through their religion, through Catholicism, where they always rape a little boy. This is part of what they are. And now that they have access to our people, homosexuals are adopting our children. It would be ridiculous for us to think they're not being raped. If you look in Haiti, what's going on in Haiti now is an abomination. They're systematically raping young boys in Haiti. So we not only face an internal situation of sexual abuse in our communities that has been a cycle that can be stopped when we take it very seriously, seriously enough that a person knows that if they get caught doing it, they are surely going to die. One thing I have learned with anything for black people, there's one serious thing that is a learning tool for black people, and it's called pain. I've had many situations where I've dealt with brothers, you try to talk to them, you try to do all these different things. One thing black people understand it's pain. And that's why we don't get up to fight this European. It's not because we don't realize that they're killing our people, that they're murdering our babies, that they're assassinating our, our, our communities, that they're keeping us off these jobs and mistreating us. You know why we don't fight them? Because we know that they will blow our goddamn brains out. They will burn our homes down and they will kill us. We are afraid because we know that if we strike, when they strike, they're going to strike serious, hard, and long. And you know what we do because of that? It chills us out. We want to get up and stand up. And only the bravest of the brave will go out there and do anything. It works. So I'm saying that same philosophy can work in the black community. Look, there's a lot of mistakes that can be made. But one mistake that if you make this mistake, you're going to be killed if you put your hands on our children. In addition to that, see, this is the part that's not being talked about. Here at War on the Horizon, we have DVDs, Predators in Our Midst. We put out the information into the community so people can see it and try to prevent the continuance of the cycle, to understand where it came from, to understand how it permeates. So you, you are doing something to prevent it, but the reality of it is education and psychoanalysis is fine. Pedophiles are not going to stop raping children because somebody psychoanalyzes them. They're going to stop when the, like they do today, when the penalty is stiff enough that they, they can't do it. And right now, the only thing that stops them is bullets in the back of their head or a, a permanent jail sentence. Punishment has never stopped crime. Punishment has never stopped crime. It hasn't stopped it in America. It don't stop it in Africa. It don't stop it in the Middle East. If you're saying that taking life for pedophiles to know that you're murdering other pedophiles is going to stop their behavior, that is absolutely ridiculous. No more than knowing you're going to go to jail for raping somebody stops rape from occurring. And the reason why it doesn't stop these types of behaviors from occurring is because they have unconscious psychological motivators that are related to a delinquent and deficient childhood and lack of emotional nurturing early on in their years. You are not going to stop psychological illness by punishing it. It's ridiculous. It is never going to occur. Get to we, the we, children. We, we, we raise them correctly. Provide them with what they need, and you will see that the amount of this sickness will start to reduce itself when the children are properly being taken care of. But again, we want to get them at the end of the cycle and say, you've been messed up by this white society, and you've been messed up because we ain't built a damn institution for none of you, nor have we provided any type of program to help your children. We know that, but because you got messed up and polluted by the system, now we got to kill you, even though we're just as responsible as you are for what you did, because we knew if we didn't step in, chances of you becoming the way you are were going to significantly increase, but we still stood by the lines and done nothing. And because you have become another casualty 
in this psychosexual war. We're just going to kill you because we don't feel like doing what we need to do to prevent you from getting sick in the first place. This reactionary, I'll never support that nonsense. It's not nonsense, and I'll be honest, brother. I love you, but you don't understand warfare. Let's go back. To well, I understand game. warfare. I just don't agree with you. Yeah, and because up. I don't agree with you don't mean I don't understand warfare. I want to make that clear. I'm, I'm going to say that. i let you speak. I'm saying you don't understand warfare. I'm not no, saying I'm that. You, you don't know what I understand. And the fact that I don't agree with you does not mean I don't understand warfare. It doesn't mean You're that. You're drawing the conclusion that because I don't agree with you, I don't understand it. warfare. Right. You say I'm saying I'm something. A deep, I'm, I'm a deep I'm study of political science. Oh, Hold up. I'll let you speak. You I understand it. that, but you made a conclusion I needed to speak on. So if you're going to make an assumption about me that you don't know, I'm going to interrupt you and speak on that. I'm making a direct statement. Like you said, what I'm saying is ridiculous. I'm not telling you can't say that. This is your airway. No, 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 no. But saying that but what you said that, is ridiculous, ridiculous. is coming from someone who's an expert in that area. If you okay? if I but I didn't say anything about what you knew or what you did not know. It don't you matter. told me I don't understand warfare. We never had a conversation on warfare, so you, you can't make that determination, brother. That's what I'm telling you. Now you giving it, and you got to take it. Now let's go. No, back. I'm gonna give it and take it, brother. I give it and take it all day. I give it and take it. Let's you be don't. clear on that. This is warfare. Mao Zedong said, "I know that the Europeans put you on heroin. I know it's not your fault." You got three months to get off heroin because we cannot have a country of heroin addicts. And guess what? China is arguably today the superpower on planet Earth. You know why? I am well That's aware with the accomplishments of Brother Mao. Wait a minute, hold up. After that three ahead, months, you know what he did? He took the I know heroin exactly what he did. He lined them up and he blew their goddamn brains out. And he said, Listen, I hated to do it. But it had to happen. And guess what? After that, they moved forward, and China is the world power in the world today. What do you have to say about okay. that? Okay, I'm going to tell you what I got to say about that. First of all, what you just spoke on, okay, I speak on regularly, and who he exterminated was the traitors, not necessarily those who suffer from chemical dependence. But the difference between you and Chairman Mao was that he had absolute control over the country, and you do not. So if you're going to give me that rationale and say, Brother Umar, we have control over our society, which we do not, and say that we're going to get rid of all sickness right now and start over, build it from the ground up, if you had control, then maybe I can listen to that. But you don't have control over your society like Chairman Mao does. The white man has control over your society. And until you get it, there's no way in hell I'm going to endorse any ridiculous strategy that says kill victims when we're responsible for the illness that they're suffering from because we ain't building the institutions that they need. So when you are in the position that he was in, we can reason on your strategy, brother. But until you are, we can't. It's not useful. I'm saying it's a ridiculous statement because the reality is the only way to get control of your community is, is to say we want to protect our babies. And you can't it's protect your babies pedophiles. trying to teach a pedophile. A pedophile is not a victim. A pedophile is a perpetrator. And there's only one way to deal with a perpetrator, and is that to be serious and not use semantics. Semantics doesn't stop. I'm not reason. using semantics. Punishment does not cure crime. It ain't slowed not one type of crime down ever. That's a damn semantic, and that's a myth. There's no proof in that. Show me any proof that, that, that punishing crime reduces a genie. It does not. No criminology textbook, no sociology textbook, no nothing. Not even African sociologists and criminologists on the continent, they will show you that it does nothing to do away with crime because most crime is motivated by unmet need, economic or psychological. So now, separate the pedophiles, genie. Separate the pedophiles. Now we left with all the quote-unquote normal children. What are we doing for them to make sure they don't become pedophiles? Because I see you at the end of the cycle killing people who get messed up. What are you doing for the ones who ain't sick right now? Don't you tell me you're going to kill people when you're doing nothing for the healthy babies. No, that, 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 that you are doing something. You're protecting them from getting raped. What are you talking about, bro? You talking what are you about? talking about? They can still develop that tendency to want to have sex with other children based on unmet needs. You ain't protecting them because you killed a pedophile or two. Pedophilia is a false genie. Thousands. Killing a few ain't going to do nothing about it. 
Listen. I just told you that one of the triggers for the behavior is unmet needs in childhood. If one person, so if you ain't supporting those people, parents and supporting man, those families, if one the knowledge of that whole psychological if process that brings forth the pedophile is incomplete. If one person can 300 people, if one person can rate 300 people, you're saying if you catch them when they rate 50, don't stop them then. Let them rape another nope. two No, 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 no. What I'm telling you is your whole approach to dealing with the problem is incomplete. That's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that nowhere in your strategy, which is totally reactionary, do you deal with preventing the pedophiliac urge from coming into place in the first place. From the beginning in the first place. And if you're going to sit here and tell me it's all because some white man is showing the children how to be gay. Now, on the sociological level, yes, but that 16-year-old girl we talked about, hell, she probably never even been alone with a white man in her life. That ain't why the hell she's doing it. She's doing it because she was traumatized. And who's she's doing it because she was traumatized by her own family. And where what are we from? going to do to prevent the trauma that where brings about the pedophilia? Where did it come from? Are you telling me that whites did not put pedophilia in the black community? I'm telling you that homosexual behavior has its origin in European cultural behavior. But I'm also telling you that from a psychological standpoint, children who molest will molest even if they never came under the influence of any type of European example of the behavior. I know because I work with them. Many of them never well, been exposed to that direct European example of the behavior. What are you talking about? That is the Say that European again. example Say that again. of Say that again. We are I can't in hear America. You. We we are in America. We've been on slave farms and we've had cycles of sexual abusers in our families raping our and children. And I'm and telling you that not all sexual abuse is a direct result of learning it from white people. You damn right I'm telling you that. You damn right I'm telling you that some of that blame is on the black community itself. The reason why you don't get homosexuality in Africa prior to the invention or the coming to the continent of the European is because children were reared by a community. So the chance of them not having their emotional needs met were slim and probably totally didn't exist at all. No, the reason you didn't have homosexual the process, no, the you didn't, the manner no, the in which our children are being raised is the unhealthy. You didn't and when have you have unhealthy processes in place, Jeannie, no, the reason you didn't have homosexuality in Africa, you're going to get pathological you behavior. When or without the white man, you're going to get, you get pathological behavior. Right, right, when right, right, or right, without right. the white man, you're right. going to get let, let me let, let me let me let me wedge in between just one second, brother. Now I got to do this right now. I'm sorry. I, I hate to do it, but I had to do that. Look, I, that's real disrespectful. What I'm doing. I love you, brother Smith. But I'm I'm gonna hold it. I got this right here. The brother talking over top of me. Nah, wait a minute. I'm letting him talk. The reason we didn't have homosexuality in Africa before the European is because the Europeans didn't come there and rape them. Once they came and raped people and forced homosexuality on our people, now you got this sexual psychosis going around in your community. And the only way to fix it is to take the people who are so sick that they're going to do the Europeans' bidding and prevent them from doing it. And what Brother Umar here is saying is, no, don't actually do nothing about it. Just let it roam, let it continue, and see if you can help the victims. Well, how many victims are you going to have? This guy's going to make 360. Then the next guy's going to make 360. Then the next guy's going to make 360. So you just let them make millions of sexual abuse victims while you sit around and come up and pontificate on how you can psychoanalyze somebody to fix them. It won't work. He can't prove that it'll work. It has never worked. No one can show any proof anywhere in the history of the world where sexual abuse has been fixed without dealing directly with sexual abusers and taking them out of positions of power over people. We do not have a way to control these people and lock them up. The only solution for it is for us to make sure that they understand they can't rape in our community. Let me put the brothers back on. Put both the brothers back. Well, okay, you made your point. You talked about how there's no evidence here, no evidence there. Okay, first of all, there is evidence that sexual offenders can be rehabilitated. I work in that area. You don't. So you're speaking on something you don't know of. Second of all, you have no proof that punishing crime prevents it. Third of all, you still ain't speak one time, not one time, on what you're going to do to prevent that 
pedophiliac urge from developing in our children. You said they're getting it from the European. I'm not going to argue that. Largely that's correct, but it's not fully correct. And furthermore, as long as our children are exposed to European culture, what are you going to do to prevent them from the developing the, pedoph the pedophiliac urge? Oh, you'll kill the baby, but you won't do a damn thing to the European. Like well, I said the first time, your strategy is totally reactionary and ineffective. What are you going to do to prevent the development of mental illness in a sick society? Let me answer it. You ask me a question. Now, here's the proof in the pudding. And stop so, muting the phone when you have something to say, brother. Ask me a question, brother. Come on now. I'm trying to say. I know. I just say don't mute the phone. That's all I said. No, I'm saying I, just let me speak. I'm letting you speak. Here's the reality. You ask me what I'm going to do. For the last 15 years of my life, predators in our midst. I've done that lecture maybe seven times before I got it to where I thought it could help. A lecture doesn't heal anything, Jenny. So what? You did a lecture. What are you going to do to prevent it? What's the program? What's the process? Don't tell me about no damn lecture. Brother, I'm, I'm sorry, Brother Smith. Uh, I don't want to mute Brother Smith. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put the brother on there, but did you see it? I'm letting him speak. He can't slow down, so I got to just cut him down so I can speak. Then I'll put him back so he can speak. Here's the reality, brother. For the last 15 years of my life, I put together lectures that deal into the psychology of our people. And the brother left, left the line because I muted him. Okay. I apologize for that, brothers and sisters. I didn't mean to put them off the line, but we got to have respect on the form both ways. The reality of the situation, I've put together to the best of my ability information. With, I want you to understand, I have to sit down and pour through thousands of hours of studying these sick psychopathic crackers to understand why our people are sexually abused. Let me, let me go even deeper. Bro, I, I really hate to do this, King Samir, but I got to speak to this. I want y'all to understand why this is, this, is, this is hurting me. The single reason that I've dedicated my life to my race today to fight these crackers for you is because I had a young lady who I was friends with in Massachusetts. I was 15 years old. I love this woman. She's a beautiful woman, Jamaican sister. And one day she sat down with me and told me that when she was in Jamaica and around 12 or 13 years old, one of those guys down there, I think it was her uncle or her cousin, dragged her into the woods and raped her. And at that moment, I said, whoever's out here raping our children, I'm going to get rid of them. I thought there was two or three guys. I could go find these guys and stop it and make sure nobody ever did that again. From that point in time, when I heard that and became aware that our people were getting savagely, psychologically, sexually ravaged, Every sister I started meeting in my life started telling me, brother, I've been sexually abused. I've been sexually abused. It started coming so much, I stopped wanting to even hear it, but I could not turn away from my sisters who were telling me this. So we started to do it. I was with an organization called PKV, and the brothers were saying, man, we got to stop the sexual abuse in the black community. How do we stop it? Well, first we had to study it. This is back in 1990s. We started studying it. I didn't know that I was going to open up books and go through the history of Europeans and find out that this was what Europe did and that sexual abuse, that the individuals with the power on this planet were sexual abusers and they were intent on sexually ravaging everybody on this planet. I didn't know that. I didn't even want to know that. When I found it out, then what did we do? We had to teach our people. We had to start talking about what's happening in our community. And we doing lectures about this subject, going to our people saying, we got to stop the sexual abuse in our community. We're doing forums. We're doing all of this stuff. As we begin to study it, we start saying, wait a minute. This is leading to an explosion of homosexuality in our community. Wow, this is orchestrated. It's not an accident. We started finding out about sex farms. We started finding out and started linking it to what they were doing in the prison systems with our youth. And we said, whoa, we are under homosexual, pedophilic, worldwide assault. How do you take that and make it simple for a person that's sitting in their home and their uncle rapes them every evening? This is the most difficult work in the world. When Brother King Samir said what happened to him, I swear to God, man, I had to walk to the other side of the room. I want to kill somebody, man. This is my brother, man. You know how many black men have come to me and told me, thank you for the work you do in these videos because it's made me realize there's nothing wrong with me. I was violated and I'm a man and I'm going to keep fighting. Thank you, Irritated Genie. Do you think I want to hear my brothers telling me that somebody sexually violating them? I don't want to hear that stuff, man. But when I hear it, it don't make me run from it. 
It makes me say, I can't keep talking about this. Yes, we're going to keep educating our people, but these are real people who rape real children. Someone has to put their hands on these people. Brother Umar is a beautiful brother. He wants to save everybody. We can't save everybody. We can't save everybody. I love the brother because he, he loves our people so much he don't want to see one of them go. But God damn it, I don't love no pedophile. I want him to go. He has to go. I can't save my race if I got to go out here in the streets and fight and there's some faggot in my house that's going to put his hands on my daughter. I can't even go out there and fight. We have to clean up. We got to do it. That's why I don't drink. That's why I don't smoke. That's why we don't do these things. Why do you think we try to clean ourselves up? Why do you think we have these airways? We got these airways so you can hear this message. So we can try to do something. King Samir is doing it tonight. What I'm saying is we should have mutual respect. If Brother Umar wants to save the pedophiles, if he can stop him from doing that, he should be offered that opportunity. But what I'm saying is y'all understand what I'm saying out there. Y'all know what I'm saying. Somebody got to say there's another side of this. He's the healer. We the cleansers. If you can fix yourself, good. Better go do it because if you don't, we're going to finish this problem. We're not going to allow you to do this. And we got to have that. And I don't like the fact that someone will come on Warner Horizon and try to tell people who don't agree that, that we can't do that, that they don't have the right to say that. But he got the right to do that. And it's his job to heal our people. But I'm saying when it happens, I got to speak. I'm sorry, Brother King, me. It's back on you. I apologize. Yeah, I'm here. I have I have my phone on mute. Sorry. I apologize, bro. Ah, uh, man. Well, uh, <laughs> brother, I totally understand. And like I said, family, I I understand both sides. You know, but there has to come a time where justice has to be served. I'm, I'm, I mean, you know, we, we have to serve justice. Now, that justice could come in the physical form. It could come in the spiritual form. It could come in the healing form. It could come in the uh, refining form. But justice has to be served. So with all of that being said, uh, I hope everyone really, really, really paid attention tonight. You know, uh, I wasn't expecting that, but, hell, good dialogue. You know, I mean, we can't pontificate every goddamn thing all the time. We can't agree on everything all the damn time, okay? But this is building. This is learning. Steel sharp as steel. Cotton only shines it. You know, so I thank Brother Umar for calling in, you know, with his fire as usual. I thank the Warden of Horizon team. I thank all of the callers and those who are just listening in their homes, in your cars, you know, in, in, in bed with Penelope, however you was listening. I truly and humbly appreciate it. And, man, this is, I guess, our longest show <laughs> for the Stop Cooning Show. We're now at the 10 o'clock hour. But... The information family, I, I had to do this. I had to do this. I had to do this. I was excited about doing it because I knew it was going to raise our minds to a whole new level. So I thank everyone for your support. Keep listening to the Stop Cooney Show every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 760 569 Seven six seven six. The code is nine four eight six five six. And uh, I actually did have a question for Brother Umar. For uh, somebody wanted me to ask, but we'll get black at it. Uh, but maybe I will. Let me let me try to give it a shot. The question was: Were there any uh, success rates of a pedophile? Uh, I guess refining his life or her life. Me personally, let me say this is my first time actually sitting down with a pedophile trying to have dialogue. I've done nothing like this before ever in my life because in most instances, this is where I feel you, Jeannie, that pedophile wouldn't have lasted 
too long, seriously. So in my growth and development as a leader, as a teacher, as a, a soldier, as a comrade, as your brother, I had to learn to be more become more diplomatic in my ways of thinking and actions because I am in a leadership position. So I have to really, really, really start understanding and carrying myself with that understanding in that manner. So as much as I felt like removing this pedophile from the planet, I had to now, you know, come into the thinking, rising above emotions, into the thinking of God. So I could be able to bring this dialogue to you because if I was still in my my thug days, trust me, this it wouldn't have went down so pretty that easy. So I thank everyone for listening, but please sit down with your children, talk to your children. Talk to your babies. You have to ask them, is Auntie such and such touching you? Is Uncle Uncle Durag, is he how does he act around you? You have to talk to your babies. All right? So with that being said, family, I love you more than you hate your black self. Please, please, please tune in next week to the King Samir Stop Cooning Show, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, War on the Horizon Radio. Jeannie, give me a call.